turn on the audio first. <laughs> My fault. So I'm actually going to use Socrates here to make some of the final points of my presentation this morning. Don't worry, I don't know where he's going with this either. <laughs> Thanks for the support. Um, what I mean is that I started my presentation here uh, with a Socratic dialogue, and I intend to end it that way as well. So if you came in late, so I started with Plato's uh, Republic, and what Plato did with the Republic and with his other dialogues is that he, he basically wrote a play with Socrates, where Socrates was dead, but in, the, in, this, in his work, he argued with different people. And so here's my Socrates, and we're going to do the same thing. So, <clears throat> I hope that I laid a seed in your mind earlier about reciprocity and division of labor, and how as software systems grow more and more complicated, they're going to start taking on some of the properties that we've seen in other industries like rocket science or building buildings, where the level of complexity begins to demand this division of labor on a scale that perhaps we haven't seen before. Or oh, horrified. Let's get on with it. <laughs> I'm off my lines. Indeed, and therefore to see the future of the software industry, one could perhaps study the past of others. As space exploration demands the combined efforts of specialists with limited understanding of each other's trades, software developers must similarly diversify in order to meet the growing demands of their field. But Socrates, I, I don't know about that because Software is already a fairly narrow discipline. Some might say this isn't going to happen just because we're all really just programmers anyway. And, I mean, wouldn't it be correct to say that software is just a narrow discipline? And it was a narrow discipline, but has rapidly expanded. For some time, many have informally recognized focus areas such as embedded software, graphics, and artificial intelligence. Okay, but wouldn't those be considered just topics? Sort of like a painter decides to paint portraits one day and a landscape another day. I don't know if it's really correct to call those different disciplines. And in fact, I think some people feel that software developers are basically interchangeable, that we could take a software who might specialize, a developer who's working on one kind of topic and move to a different kind of topic and it uh, you know, wouldn't cause any problem at all. I think a lot of people believe that. And that belief will come to an end. As software projects grow to the scale of skyscrapers, developers will specialize further in order to cope with the complexity of the systems they build. Well, that sounds pretty risky. Thousands of developers working on a system and not really understanding what each other is doing. It doesn't sound like a, a, a safe thing to do. How are we going to make it possible for those people to collaborate effectively without stepping on each other. Using the same principles employed in skyscrapers, foundations, frameworks, and architecture, do these terms sound familiar? Indeed they do. So I think that's what Eclipse is all about and what we've been talking about all week. And so to conclude, I feel that what Eclipse is enabling here is for people like me and for many of the people in this audience to build systems that are approaching unforeseen levels of complexity without them all just falling apart. And so, I'm really looking forward to what this community is, is building now and how we're going to use it to explore the universe in the future. And so this civilization will help to discover new civilizations beyond. And for that, I thank you. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you.